Hi, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Lee and Me on NLBP TV. I am Camille Miller, your host of the Natural Life Business Partnership with my co host, Lee Gabarzik, Soulful Mandela's out of Long Valley, New Jersey. Hi, Lee. Hello, Camille. Today, we're going to start talking about doing inner work before going to the outer work. And before we turn on the camera, you were talking a little bit about this. Yes. That's how you phrased it, though. Yes, so I would say that progress is, progress is an inside job, is, is I think how I was describing it. Well, more about, you were saying about, we had this urge, or most people have an urge to like, build a belt of achievements yeah. without yeah. having inner purpose or, yes. you know, yeah. sort of doing self-reflection. Absolutely. A lot of times what happens, and um, when I'm, and, I, and also with the clients, the people that I work with, a lot of times the, the motivations to accomplish a task is really attached to a family dynamic where maybe a father or mother never really achieved what it is that they're doing. The child would do that kind of role as a way of getting their parents' love and attention. Yeah. And then um, maybe, the, maybe the parent, maybe the mother had depression. And then the, then the child would try to be funny and say something funny and cute because they didn't like to see their mother depressed. And then they would um, uh, get really attached to, you know, performing like that. And this is what Howard Stern actually uh, talks about in, in ah. the last book. He said, I was always there because my mother had depression. He goes, I was always there to cheer her up. And he said, I never really thought about how that kind of was creating like a trauma bond that I was every time that I did this, he said, I would go, he said, when he started with therapy, he said, I go through this whole thing. He said, and I'm giving my best material and I'm, and I'm doing the best thing. He said, I'm talking about my mother. And I, he said, I'm doing impressions of my mother and my father. And he said, I'm killing it. I'm killing it. And the therapist looks at and isn't laughing. It isn't saying anything. And it just looks at me. He said, that's really sad. It's really oh. sad. <laughs> because he said, you don't, you don't know who you are here. You're performing a role, but you're not doing it consciously. You're doing it out of an attachment. You're continuing uh, to perpetuate a dynamic that really is about less than, about an external world that's depressed, sad, and lonely. And you have to act like some kind of cheerleader to rally the forces, but not doing so conscientiously or, more importantly, without looking at your own needs. Mm, I get it. That's so a big thing. Yeah, that is huge. And why I loved this topic when you brought it up is because I see, especially in our community, people mm -hmm. reaching for or just following whatever they were supposed to do after college or, you know, mm -hmm. if they went to college, whatever it was, their journey. So for mm -hmm. me, I was brought up in a strict family. I had my education. I went to college. I got a master's. Like I kept, you know, I was to get a job and support myself and, um, and I think a lot of people go through that. Yeah. And you get to a point where you say, okay, like I finished my degree, I did this, I did this, and it's not fulfilling, or I didn't choose a good path. Like I thought this was the way I wanted to go, but it, right. it doesn't feel really good. It doesn't feel authentic. It doesn't feel like I'm living my purpose. And I see a lot in our community. I always say you're right for our community if you feel like you've walked two paths or you're like feel divided. You come to a point yeah. in your life and you're just like, this doesn't make my heart sing. This is not what makes me want to wake up and be joyful every morning. And I think that's where people take this turn of self-reflection, but it happens later in life. I think it does. I mean, it does. Lucky you get it ahead of time. But it was, yeah. oh, for me, it was always achievements. You know, I was one of the top athletes. I was always uh -huh. in honor roll. I was always, like, it was over and over and over. And I was still doing that. And I would say, well into my 40s, I, I stopped getting competitive. But, you know, there's always something you had to achieve. And then it was yeah. letters behind my name. How many more letters could I have? Certificates could I have? Like, um, and then one day it just all stopped. <laughs> and I was like... <laughs> matter it has nothing to do with who i am you know no. i still i still read and and i love learning yes right but it's a but it, but i've you know created a world that serves me a little bit better like well i i think that you know one of the one of the i i remember when i was a teenager i remember thinking it really feels unfair somehow that i'm supposed to know what i'm supposed to do for the rest of my life you know what do mm -hmm. i know absolutely and, and um 
and I really jumped around a lot. There's a, you know, I was trying on different hats, you know, I was trying on, I went from everything from, you know, am I going to become a doctor or a dentist? Am I going to become a sociologist? Am I, and I, I was entertaining doing forensics. I was um, entertaining being a sociologist, a psychologist. Um, and um, then I went into music. I was going to be a musician. I have a degree in music, no less. And then I was just happened to, to just to stumble upon uh, my college yearbook. I just kind of fell into it through circumstance. Okay. And it was the thing that felt right. And I never knew, I didn't have enough of an experience and nobody really knew what art direction was, which is mm -hmm. really commercial art. Nobody really told me about that. I didn't know maybe you can make a living at it. And then I went from there into Pratt Institute and I got right in on an honors program because I was the right fit. But I had to have an awareness of myself. All of the signs were there. I was designing and drawing, you know, it was all laid out. It was all evidential in the kind of stuff that I was, was, was you know, attached or, or not just attached to, but fulfilled by. And I just didn't know how to make that into some kind of like uh, uh, expression that, that yeah. was coming with a career. Yeah. So it's very interesting. Um, there's a lot of people that believe that you always show who you should be in life by who you were as a kid before someone told you who to be. Yeah. And uh, it was interesting as my own kids have grown and now I have um, two that are seniors that are going off to college kind of deciding, what do I do? What my major, where do I go? Like it's kind of, and I'm like, wow, you know, at 17 and 18 years old, you actually have no idea, mm -mm. right? And I, like I, and I'm still recreating myself, right? But yeah. for my oldest daughter, we always thought, she was always talked about being a geneticist. She loves science. She loves mm -hmm. that whole piece of it. She got to her senior year and she told us she was going to film school. <laughs> <laughs> but I also always taught them to just follow People whatever's in their heart. Together, right? <laughs> yeah, just follow what's in their heart. Like, just do what you do and it will all come to you, right? Just always be passionate and be hardworking, but yeah. follow your passion and the money will always be there. And I remember, um, you know, meeting with her science teacher and meeting with her film teacher, and they were both like, she's so exceptional. But I was really surprised when the film teacher said it, but, but she yeah. was, and then as she was going off to school and stuff, she needed to find old pictures. And I'm like going through, and there's a file on my computer called Nicole's Movies. From oh when goodness. she was, she used to steal my camera. And at that time they were on little discs, you know, like digital Yes. So I always had to download them to get off right. my camera so I could take pictures. And I just kept dumping them in files and never looked at them. So wow. as she's going off to school, I'm like, oh my God, she always loved being behind the camera. Yep. The first thing she asked for, like when she was little, like five years old, she wanted a camera. And she used to always steal my camera. This is before phones, right? Like, and uh, it, it's amazing to see her eye, and she has a great eye today, but see in film school, she definitely has this like drive, but it was that moment of, oh my God, that's who she always was. You know, and why I, not follow that? Right, and part of, you know, we're talking about this being an inside job. If we're in a state of self-reflection, yeah. if I'm really looking at my life, and I'm not just, you know, I'm not just reacting to it, you know, I'm not yeah. just surviving, I'm actually really thinking about it. I'm mindful, if you would, about what's going on here. It is going to save me a lot of time and effort because now instead of like working harder and you've got to try harder, you know, you, when I was going like and doing the, uh, you know, the doctor dental crap, when it, that kind of role, um, I was doing it based on what I thought my family wanted me to do. Right. And I really wasn't looking at like, wait a second, I hate this stuff. I hate like this the chemistry and it's just, oh, and I, and I just didn't really resonate with it. And I really wasn't just paying attention to my own uh, yeah. feelings about things. If I really felt and connected emotionally and really honored what I was experiencing, I would have jumped on this a long time ago because as a child, I would go in, I'm sure people, well, maybe they don't know about Spirograph, but I was, as a little kid, I would play with Spirograph for hours, completely yeah. undisturbed. I would just go down, I'd start playing this, the, you know, drawing this, these, the, these pieces, and, and, I, and, and my mother's like, what are you doing? No, but I, <laughs> 
but I found the rhythm and the line of it and the symmetry and the, I, I found the, the look of them satisfying in some way. And I didn't know what, I didn't know what to do with it. I didn't know what it was about, but there was something in it. I remember drawing letters. I used to, I was like a you know, burgeoning typographer. I would draw letters, like different alphabets. I would create them on projects. I would draw them. And then, so a real interest in letter form and letter design. And I never thought anything of it. I never really, but these were the things that, that were easy for me to do because they fit. I think that that's the right thing. What is the right fit? But if I'm not self-reflective, if I'm not really conscious of what's going on, how am I going to find that? You know, yeah. I'm, I'm going to wait for somebody else to tell me, you know, or yeah. I'm going to continue to be, there's always, no, no, I love the phrase, no soul is forever ignorant. Eventually, yeah. It keeps popping people, up. Keeps popping up. <laughs> Eventually people realize that yeah. this is the thing that is actually um I was watching uh uh um Jim Carrey do a commencement speech and he was talking about how he said, you know, he said, you know, my father was brilliant. He was a brilliant comedian, he said better than me. And he said, but he, he was, he played it safe because he didn't know how to entertain what was important yeah. to him. So he went and he took a job, but like in some kind of standard sort of uh, mechanic job. And that job was something that he then was settling for. And in his playing it safe, he ended up getting laid off. And he said, and then we became homeless. He said, you know, and he said, from that, I, picked up and I and I went and tried what I was doing that I loved because I thought well if I'm going to possibly fail anyway at least I would prefer failing at something that really mattered to me or something that was instead of just playing it safe and failing that way yeah because to him he said that was a greater loss the other thing that he said that was so powerful for me is he goes on about how you know he said he's looking at the room and he goes I really wish he said, I really wish all of you, I could just show you what fame and money are about. He said, because I have them. He said, I want you to know it doesn't matter. I just wish you knew it. He said, we strive for these things. He said, we make such a deal about them. But he said, your problems, whatever they are, are still going to be there no matter what. You may have more money. You may be able to entertain. But you, then, then the other thing is then you get to entertain your insanity too. <laughs> because <laughs> that's another problem there. And then you get to not have to look at yourself because you're yeah. famous. You have to make ever sure that everybody agrees with you. Otherwise, you fire them or whatever. But that, he said, that is the thing I wish you knew because if you if you knew that, he said, you would act like what you what you want to achieve really matters independently of anything else, and the rest will come. He said, it's just like you said, the rest will come out of that. Yeah, I, I totally agree, and um, I think it's so interesting when I'm you know um, helping people with their businesses and growing and really having it grow around them being authentic. Yes. Um, it's 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 a hard battle internally. But I'm always yeah. telling them, until you do that inner work, you can't do the outer work. Like, you really have to love yourself. Like, right, you can't love someone else until you love yourself. Because what are you Absolutely. looking for? Otherwise, you're just looking for crap, right? So you're looking for all your problems in someone else. <laughs> but yeah. right, it's, that, it's that same type of self-reflection and, and, and kind of knowing. The interesting thing that I'm working with a lot of people now is as you grow your business, um, I think I've said it in another podcast, I'm doing this new division of NLBP called Six Figure Souls. And as I'm interviewing people that have hit these six figures, what I'm learning is, um, you know, new level, new devil. It's all, you bring yes. all your crap with you. You're just yeah. doing it at a bigger level. If you're in debt, you're in yeah. bigger debt. If you're, in, you're yes. in scarcity, you're in bigger scarcity. If you're, you know, like wherever you are, and I think as you go through life, it's always, you know, can I have the bigger house, the nicer car that I went through it, you know, the bigger house, nice car, and you still sat there lonely. You know, yeah. it, it didn't fulfill anything, and, and I didn't get yeah. fulfilled until I actually went really small again. Um, yeah, like, uh, you know, don't have a lot of stuff, and I'm yeah. happier than ever because it's easier. Life is just yeah. easier, right? Well, then, then it, so, so, um, you know, I remember like Biggie Smalls, uh, no money, more problems. If you have what, 
the, the, the challenges of life are proportionate to whatever it is that you're entertaining responsibly, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if I'm starting out really kind of small, I got some problems. I get a little bit bigger, bigger problems, and then bigger problem, bigger problems. So the problems that I have are always going to be, like you said, there's another one that, that I find uh, kind of crazy is geographical restlessness. You know, in this area is really, really bad. If I went to the West Coast, it would be fine because it's so great. Or if I go to Bali, it's yeah, so fine. Yeah. It'll be great. Or if I go to Alaska. No, 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 no. Same problems, same people. Same thing, because guess what? The common That's denominator, true. you. <laughs> <laughs> I never thought of that one, but so true. I used to say, as a parent, like, oh my God, I can't wait for my kids to get out of this age, right? Or I can't wait right. for them. next year will be so much better, or next year, like, and I remember my father laughing at me. He's like, honey, as soon as they get older, your problems just get bigger. <laughs> <laughs> You know, instead of asking for 20 bucks, now they're asking for 20,000 for a down payment on a house. Like, he's like, he doesn't get better. He gets to get more serious and harder. And then there's more family. Like, he's like, there's never a place where it's just flowing, you know, like, it, yeah. like I think it's more about acceptance. So well, I think love exactly where you are. Well, part of this is, again, this is the internal part of this. If I'm working in this process in a way of reflecting on it and addressing the issues as they come up that deal with my, uh, I don't know, maybe it's something that I have about a fear state or a scarcity state or whatever it is, and I haven't made a peace with that. Well, I'm going to continue to entertain that at greater levels or greater complexity. So if I want to look inside and say, you know what, I get I've been resistant to something. I get that I've been judgmental about something, or I get that I have some form of self-hatred or whatever. And I need to make, be okay with this so I don't have to carry this burden because part of this evolution of personal responsibility as you you know get into more and more money and also with time time's another part of this as we grow older we get yeah. more and more experiences piling up yeah. on our backs and if we're that's why people are like you know they're all <laughs> Because if I'm not kind of keeping the, as you were talking about, keeping it light for me, keeping what I'm carrying around as light as I can be by continuing to let go of the things that have been a concern of mine by addressing them, by squarely, you know, responsibly dealing with them so that they can be, you know, alleviated and I can move on. How am I going to, how am I going to thrive? You know, how am I going to be able to do well? Because I'm always carrying, oh my goodness, I'm, let's say it's like you were saying, attached to things. I have all of these properties and I need to manage them. And what am I going to do about that? Or maybe, well, when I, if, if my personal value is not from within, if my attachment is all of those things yeah. now, I've thrown my energy outside of myself and now I'm all caught up in this micromanagement of different things that just exhaust me and eventually wear me wear me out. To the point where, you know, maybe maybe, you know, I just end up like, you know, just buried under the weight of that stuff. So so things are just that. They come and they go. The success that I really feel comes from within which is based on a sense of self-esteem, and I would also call it self-love, and I don't mean that in a narcissistic way, but I really like honor myself and take care of myself. Yeah. That is abundance. And then operating from that perspective, how can I do anything but succeed? I love it. Let's end on that note. <laughs> <laughs> if you loved this episode of Lee and Me, please share it with all your friends and don't forget to subscribe. If you want to tell us about something you'd like to talk about or hear us talk about, please contact us at thenaturallife.org. Thanks, Lee, for another great episode. Thanks, Neil. All right, bye. Bye.